Good morning. This is Father David. Uh, day 18 of the Nativity Fast. Uh, Christ comes to restore the image. And this is a... Uh, I was thinking, you know, how to approach this. This is uh, actually something I referenced in my sermon this past Sunday. Where... You know, Christ comes to restore the image which he made in the beginning. The title of this chapter is based on a uh, pre-feast hymn, which we talked about last night, um, leading up to Christmas. And it, you know, in a sense, gives a very hopeful thing, you know, that God made us. The Adam and Eve uh, story within the, the scriptures you know, he created us to be in communion with him. That communion has been broken. And as a result of that, you know, we have all of the suffering in this world. This could be a really heady topic. Um, and I was just thinking about how a lot of things, you know, within our church, the way that our hymns are put forward, there's a lot of jargon. There's a lot of theological... Uh, terminology that that has to get unpacked sometimes maybe it can feel like you know the approach to Christ within the church you almost have to get a master's degree to understand on the other hand you don't want things to be so simplistic and uh, you know kindergarten first second grade level that it doesn't do the beauty of the faith justice so it's a difficult thing. We have to push ourselves on one on the one hand to properly understand what these things are saying. On the other hand, it doesn't need to be a simple intellectual exercise that only talks about, you know, philosophical categories and things that don't impact our actual way of life the way that we approach people, the way that we make our decisions, the way that we uh, live our lives, the way that we work our way through this life. Um, so it was with that that I you know, approached this theme, this chapter. And just to simply, I'm going to quote you know, Father Tom, who... Uh, goes into the first couple of uh, paragraphs, you know, talking about what it means to be human. You know, ultimately, that is what it boils down to. What does it mean for us to be a human being from God's point of view? And what does he say that that means? Well, Father Tom uh, says it this way. God is a living God. And we are made also to live. God is good, and we are made to be good. God is wise, and we are made to be wise. God is peaceful and joyful, kind and compassionate, powerful and gentle. And that is the way we too are to be. God lives forever and never dies. And we also are made to be immortal. God governs all that he has made, and we, the creatures made in his image and likeness, are made to care for his creation. <laughs> we can carry the connections on endlessly. They apply in every case. Whatever God is, we are made by him to become. And most important of all, and that which contains all specific and particular elements, God is love. And we, his creatures, are made by him also to be loved. We are made to love as he loves, to love all things which he loves, and to love him first of all. It seems that that is, you know, in a sense, all we need to say. That, you know, the difficulties in which we find ourselves spring from this failure to love, this fall, we call it the fall, when Adam and Eve broke communion with God, we fell as a human race. 
from heights of glory and beauty into all of the trouble and the brokenness in which we find ourselves. And all of our problems stem from this failure to love. This failure to, and we now live in a world where it's hard to love. Where it is hard to you know, bring our lives into alignment with God as he still is. We have these desires, these broken desires that we want to follow. We want to go off and be led around by our appetites, whether that's for food or sexual gratification or power, prestige, influence over other people. Uh, you know, it, it drives us, you know, to have control over our lives, to have every single thing, you know, work the way we want it so that we're not unpleasantly surprised by anything. You know, we, we govern our lives by these things. And God still yet calls us to live lives that are ordered according to how he is. And we can spend a lifetime, and we should spend a lifetime, learning about what that entails. Uh, but one thing that I suppose I would simply say, which kind of springboards off of what I read from Father Tom here, is that we, we should be careful of confusing behavior for the actual motivations of our heart. The first one, that's, that's relatively easy to you know, adjust. Someone's an alcoholic. You can go to AA meetings and stop drinking. Yeah. You have a bad habit. You can you know, go on any kind of behavioral modification thing. You bite your nails, you, you know, put stuff on them or you tape them over and after a while you break the habit. Behavior modification is something that, quite frankly, you know, the church has things that can help us with, you know, quite frankly, if I'm honest, this right here was incredibly helpful for me in particular behavior modifications in my life as an Orthodox Christian. Simply when I wanted to do X, Y, Z, I would stop and pray the Jesus prayer as I was, you know, tempted with my thoughts or my actions or whatever it was, I'm not going into details, but my behavior has very much been modified through the use of this and it's been helpful and it's I, re I recommend this to people all the time but as you know father george eber the the priest who uh chrismated me said you know in because he saw this you know with me and, and and my tendency to focus in on behavior he said wouldn't it be great though if god not only made you into a person that did not do X, Y, Z, and that did do A, B, C, but if he changed you into a person that wanted to do A, B, C. Uh, and that's a good deal of what Theosis, becoming like God, entails, is a transformation of the human heart, a transformation of human desires, uh, an informing of that. Um, this is a transformation that's only going to be completed when Christ returns, reveals himself, every eye sees him, and we are changed by seeing him, truly. But we're called now, through a glass darkly, <clears throat> to view him through the reading of scripture, through seeing things in icons, you know, uh, through... Uh, acts of mercy and charity and love to begin to see his reality here and now and that's in, that's very difficult that's very difficult and we shouldn't expect that it will be easy or quick or even fun there are times when it seems anything but that but there are moments of beauty and glory and we get these glimpses of the goodness of God and the image that he calls us back to. Um, 
what I would say is truly seek that heart change, that heart motivation change, especially within the nativity season, but in any fasting season, in any moment of your life. Really, when you come to confession, be honest. You know, God, I don't want to fast. God, I don't want to be patient with my spouse, my children, my coworkers, you know, my boss, uh, the guy that's on the street corner that's always hassling me. You know, I don't want to be compassionate. I don't want to be, you know, uh, loving. I don't want to be selfless. I don't want to be sacrificial. And I think part of it is really owning up to it. And in doing so, you know, we're not shocking God. You know, I'm not in your image, God. I'm not according, I am in your image. I'm not according to your likeness yet, God. I'm, I'm very different from you. He, he's not going to be in heaven going, really? You know, but this is uh, a moment where we begin to bring our broken, dissonant, you know, unharmonious life up in front of God and to say, this may take a lifetime and only you can make my heart harmonious with who you are. But if I don't do that, nothing in life will have ultimate meaning. So, you know, let us recall that this is why God became man. To take a jangly, discordant, you know, unharmonious human race and to begin this process of realigning human desires, realigning human hearts, uh, presenting us with a full, beautiful humanity in himself, Jesus Christ, and over the course of our lives, slowly tuning like a guitar or a piano, the wrong notes of our hearts so that it comes more into alignment and it wants what God wants. Uh, let us be honest about what we don't want and what we do want and continue patiently to bring ourselves before the face of God made man, Christ Jesus, that he, through the prayers of all of his saints, would continue to tune the music of our hearts so that it harmonizes beautifully with who he has shown himself to be. God bless you, and Lord willing, we'll talk tomorrow.